What's going on, mother truckers? Hopefully everybody's doing great today. You know, me and Cash is King is just chilling. I know everybody already knows who Cash is King is. So let me jump on. We'll wait a few minutes, Cash, just to see if uh, but a couple right. people jump on and let them get a chance to come in. Let's see. Uh-oh. DIY semi-truck, he says, is he first? Is he first? <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's, let's... <laughs> DIY what and Don are always, they're always, <laughs> they're always the first two, so uh, we'll let those two battle it out. Oh, yeah, right? Well, it's, it's one of those things where, I'll be honest with you, honest with you. you got a, a great live, brother. I jump in your lives all the time, man, and, uh, you know, People are asking some really good questions over there. And so, you know, I'm glad to have you over here. And what we'll end up doing is um, I want people to get a chance to just know who you are, brother, because you have so much dang experience on this road. And uh, not a lot of people talk about their faults as well. And so, right. you know, the fact that you'd kind of bring everything up, we – uh you know, we appreciate you over here, you know, so let's jump on and uh, we'll see my internet over here on my phone is like, don't anyone get a teen mobile? Because if you do, uh, you're going to find yourself having my situation right now. But uh, let me see. As we're going in, what's going on, everybody in the next in the next minute or so, we're just going to jump in and start doing this. And then uh, basically, if you guys get an opportunity, you can watch on a replay. And what I will also do as well is I will edit the content so that it will be a clean uh, five, six minute of just pure information. That way, you guys just get exactly what you need instead of just listening to me and Cash ramble on like we usually do, you know. You know. So, I get in the weeds sometimes. <laughs> You know, and I'll be honest, Cash. I mean, a lot of times you think I might have the subscribers, but you'll jump on and you'll have way more people jump in your live than I ever get. People don't mind my videos, but they don't want to hear me just talk. You know, they like you, brother. That's the difference. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. I try to help. Uh, you know, I think a big part of it is just, you know, being positive and try to answer the questions honestly. You know, I don't have all the answers, but, uh, I think the more you can help people, you know, that they recognize it. They do. Oh, yeah, and that's the big part about it. And so what we're going to be doing as well is for everyone jumping on the live, I went and got uh, three custom Mother Trucker hats done up for y'all. So it's one of those things where at the end of this, we'll be giving away some. And since you're our special guest, Cash, uh, you can pick some of the, the winners for these Mother Trucker hats. You know what I mean? So, okay. Sounds like a plan. You know, Same. people will jump in as they jump in. Let's get this right. started and uh, um, let's get the ball rolling, brother. So anyone that's jumping on today uh, definitely is probably more interested in reefer hauling. So, you know, I, I wanted this to be more of a, a training course for people that are looking for something more specific in their niche. You know, right. and so we're not going to keep it as open as as usual. So. I'm pretty uh, excited that anyone that does jump in, jump in. they really want to get to where you are now, you know, and right. they want to follow those footsteps. So, you know, first off, let's let's ask the first question, you know, uh, who is Cash is King? Uh, well, I'm a truck driver, first and foremost. Uh, it's where I spend most of my life in this truck. I have uh, four kids, um, so that takes up a lot of my time. But uh, I've been, I got my CDL in 2006, and I've really done so many aspects of trucking. I've done food service, uh, I've done LTL, I uh, did pull doubles for UPS, been over the road for several years. Um, you know, I really, I've really went through a lot of the avenues of trucking, trying to get to the point to make more money. You know, that's my, that's my whole thing yeah. with trucking. I'm out here to make money. Yeah. 
No, I hear you. And so that's that's funny that you bring that up. So, you know, you're, you're saying LTL and you're saying food service. And, and I look at those two things and I think to myself, a lot of times I do myself recommend that to people because I interview a lot of people and they say for local work, if you want to make some decent money and stay at home more, LTL and food service will kind of do that for you. Uh, did you feel that was true in your situation or what were your thoughts? Yeah, they're both good avenues. If you if you have to be home and, uh, you know, they are, I, re I recommend both of them. I mean, there's no uh, major downside to either one. You know, food service, as long as you know going in, it's going to be super hard work. Uh, but for me, that's that's where I refined my backing skills was in food service. <laughs> like you, you get really good really quick out there on food service. I thought I was okay until I did food service, and then I got really good. So, uh, an LTL line haul, uh, you know, for me, it just wasn't a fit for me. But it's it's good money, and if you want to be home, I was home on the weekends. I would right. run out through the week. Right. So good money for that. But, uh, you know, I'm just, I don't know. I got the over the road bug and, you know, I, li I like being over the road. No, I hear that brother. So, you know, for people that don't know, uh, Cassius King is definitely being humble. He has a YouTube channel himself. Uh, as he starts answering more questions, uh, you guys are going to be more interested and are going to want to jump on his channel. Uh, so definitely, uh, Cassius King, if you get the chance to later on, uh, please put in your, uh, uh your YouTube link as well. And so people can subscribe to your channel and he does exactly what I do, but his own personal pay stubs, pay statements, all these, and you do them pretty much what every week. Yeah, I do a weekly recap every week. Um, even when I take the week off, you know, zero income, zero out, but, uh, it's, it's every week, um, seven day work week. You know, I don't carry over any trips. It's if anything, I'll, I'll cut it short, you know, because, I tell you if it's a five day week, if it's a six day week, if I went home for a day, um, it's all in there. And, you know, I really try to explain each load on, you know, why I took it, when I took it, how it worked out for me, you know, things like that. I, I really want people to understand before they jump into it, um, you know, a real like detailed uh, what to expect. No, no, I appreciate you for that, brother, because I'll be honest, Mother Truckers, he's like the only guy that I know that is this honest with how much money he makes. You know, most people don't want to put that out there because, uh, for one, they're, let's, they're full of shit. They, they want to say that uh, their, their booty hole don't stink and that they, they make $400,000 in every load pays $5 to $10 a mile. Yep. And I've seen videos where you're like – I didn't make nothing this week. <laughs> yeah, no, no, there's, there's ups and downs. You know, I tell everybody, um, you know, trucking is trucking. is like a roller coaster, you know, it has its higher peaks and lower peaks, but it's very rarely the same every week as an owner operator. Uh, oh, things yeah. happen. Things happen. Oh yeah, no, 100%. So let's, you know, for everyone that is interested in this, we will answer all your questions after we're done with this, but we're basically going to take you from A to Z. So just uh, be patient if you already are an owner operator or you're already working for a company uh, because, you know, we want just to give you the value. So we don't know where your experience is and we just want to give you some tidbits so that you can follow along. So if for anyone with a lot of experience, just be a little patient, you know, cash will definitely give some of those more advanced tips. So, you know, let's go real quick into the basics. So there are so many industries when it comes to trucking, right? Uh, like you talked about LTL food. I'm a mover. Okay. Yep. And it, and so there's heavy haul. I mean, there's expedite. You think about it. There is some sort of trucking for it. So, what is reefer hauling? When people talk about that, what is that exactly? Reefer hauling basically is temperature controlled freight. Um, if it needs to be cold, if it needs to be warm, you put it in a refrigerated or reefer trailer. Um, so it really works well. Uh, I can do a dry van load in that same trailer. I can do, uh, you know, in the, in the winter time, I live in Minnesota. So mm. a lot of things have to travel in trailer. A lot of things have to travel in a refrigerated trailer, 
to keep them from freezing. So we also have keep from freezing. You know, there's a lot of aspects to uh, reefer. No, I hear you. I hear you. So, okay. So I didn't even think about that because I'm a mover, right? So is it more bang for your buck to get a reefer trailer because you can haul dry van in it too, if you need to? Is it yes, worth it? I think it is. Uh, um, there's a few loads that you cannot haul in a reefer because the reefer has thicker walls with insulation. So mm -hmm. if it's a big bulk load, you know, um, one thing they don't like to haul in a reefer is rolls of paper, like, you know, giant rolls of paper for the newspapers and things. But uh, if it's on pallets, most of the time they will load it in a reefer if it's a dry van load. Man, so there you go, guys. That's one tip right there. I didn't even think about if you're going to be an owner operator and you want to be a little bit uh, more multitasking. If the same price is for a reefer trailer as it is for a dry van. You might as well get the reefer trailer so that you could do both. <laughs> right. And if you look if you look around Minnesota and the Dakotas and Montana where it's really cold, Wisconsin, most of the companies there are reefer companies because almost uh, everything has to travel in a refrigerated trailer to keep it from freezing in the winter. Uh, things you wouldn't think of, shampoo, uh, soda, water. You know, you can't just haul that in a dry van up there at 20 degrees below zero. It'll be froze solid when you get there. Oh, yeah. that See, that makes sense. So if anyone lives more like in the Midwest and in the colder states, then if you want to get home more, the type of company that you might want to apply for might be a refrigerated trucking company. Yeah. So that, yeah, see, I, a lot of I in never and out on the Midwest. No, that's awesome. So, I mean, getting into that now, I know it's been a while since you've been a company driver, sir. But, um, okay, best starting companies to get reefer training. If I Google it right now and I'm somebody that's brand new, let's be honest. Prime will pop up. Uh, Schaefer yep. will pop up, right? Yep. Even Martin will pop up. Uh, there's... There's so many of them. Swift refrigerated will pop up. Um, CR England. CR England will pop up, right? Yeah. I think Maverick even has Stevens a transport. Uh, yeah, Stevens Transport as well. So, you know, when someone's new like that, we're not here to bash any company. But if you want to get reefer hauling training, if you yourself were brand new again, Cash. What route do you think would be the best to advance? Because remember, people, our goal at the end of this isn't to be a company driver forever. If you're interested in this live right now, you're interested in becoming an owner operator and making $150,000, $160,000 net. You know, right now, these numbers might sound crazy, but as you will see, uh, this is top tier pay. So, what are your thoughts about that, Cash? What are your thoughts about that, Cash? Yeah, I think the best route to get there is. Uh, you know, most of these, uh, I recommend a smaller carrier just because I think they, they care more, you know, they, they have interest in you succeeding, you know, the mega carriers, I'm not as big a fan of because whether you succeed or not, they're going to succeed. Whereas a smaller you. carrier, their success is based on your success. Mm. So, uh, my, my recommendation would be, uh, you know, find a carrier with, your experience whether it be no experience or one year of experience most of the smaller carriers are going to need like one year to two years of experience so you got to put that time in right and you know it, it doesn't necessarily have to be with a reefer company to get that experience to like once you become an owner operator learning reefer is pretty simple um so you know, you don't always have to focus on a reefer company if you want to be a reefer owner operator in a year or two. Oh, that's, you know, interesting. As long, that's interesting. As long as you're getting owner opera, as long as you're getting over the road experience, um, it, it'll apply to reefer. So, um, a few companies that uh, there, I don't, you, you know, everybody should contact and do their own research, but uh, right. a couple right. companies that I know of that are pretty honest, fair companies that do reefer are uh, Holland Enterprises out of Fargo, North Dakota. Pretty good company. Um, J.S. Helwig out of Terrell, Texas is a pretty good one. 
Um, Schuster out of Iowa, that's a pretty good size company. Uh, Lesser out of Minnesota. Uh, Halver Van Lines out of Minnesota. And uh, Great Plains out of North Dakota. Those are a few uh, like mid size regional type. Uh, you know, they go all over the country, but they're, you know, they're smaller companies. No, thank you for that. So, uh, if you guys did not get a chance to uh, hear that, you know, you can definitely uh, listen to it on the replay. And I'll put that in the descriptions as well for people. So, I mean, when looking at that, then, because you brought up a good point, um, the learning curve from dry van to reefer really isn't too bad, you know, as far as that goes. Because yeah. I don't know it at all. So, I thought it was more of a learning curve than than just that. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, basically the main learning curve is to operate the unit on the front of the trailer. And uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, your customer will tell you what temperature to set it to. And so you just, uh, you know, you turn it on, you set the temperature. It has an option of whether it runs all the time uh, or it can do start and stop like your refrigerator at the house. You know, it cools down to a certain temperature. It cuts off when the temperature goes back up to a certain temperature. It kicks back on and cools again, you know, cycles. Oh, so it's so really that easy. Uh, so... Continuous and cycle. No, I hear you. Okay. So um, if you're if you're going out now and you, you're owning your own um, uh, trailer, is there – I only see a couple different types of units out there for them. Do you recommend one uh, more than the other? Because I only see like a name a couple. Yeah. Because tell tell me about that. Um, I prefer Great Dane. They're a little bit heavier. So if you have a big heavy truck, you know, like a big W nine hundred with a lot of chrome, that trailer may be a little heavy for you, but they're more well well more insulated. Um, there's Great Dane Utility is a very common one. Most of the mega carriers pull the, That's the uh, one utility. I usually hear. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They're a little bit lighter weight trailer. They're not insulated as thickly, but uh, they're still good trailers. Still really good trailers. Um, most of the others, like uh, Hyundai is getting into the refrigerated trailer game now. Um, and uh, there's really only two kind of cooling units on them, and that's going to be a carrier or a thermo king. Right. So it's there's not a real steep learning curve on how to operate them. They're, they're both very similar to each other as well. Oh, no, thanks. Yeah, I was just wondering for myself, you know, because I don't know, maybe I'll just go out and buy myself a, a reefer trailer for myself as well, you know, <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, right. you know, we talked about this uh, off camera a little bit, but, you know, you could go as personal as you want. But a big question that a lot of people are going to have is, OK, now they went and just say they got their experience at one of the companies you named or they went to Prime and got their a year or two year experience. They're, they're ready to uh, go. They're ready to lease or become an owner operator. Uh, offline, we talked a little bit about some things that a couple of times you ran into some we could call them failures. <laughs> but um, yeah. What are your thoughts about uh, uh, the lease uh, or the owner operator route? What should someone really do when they hit this, you know, <laughs> spot in their life? Right, right. Um, I am a uh, huge fan of buying your own truck, not lease, not leasing from a company. Um, I've done it before. They control too much of your asset. That truck is your asset. And uh, they take it over. They control it. So I think you're better off, um, you know, if you've got decent credit and like a few thousand, maybe like five, six thousand to put down on a truck. Right. You're much better right. off to go buy yourself a forty, fifty thousand dollar truck. And uh, I think you're better off doing it that way. That way, if the carrier at not treating you right, you can take your asset and leave and go somewhere else and not lose your equity you've put into your truck. Okay, so, no, I appreciate you for that, Cash. So you've told me off camera two instances where you did try lease, and and it just didn't work for you. Um, yeah. What were the big indicators that made it not work for you? At what moment did you figure out that, hey, I'm not making any money? You know, was it right. 
Uh, you know, can you el elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah. So the first one I did was Western Express, and uh, that was horrible. That was an absolute nightmare. Um, you know, you run the numbers on the lease purchase before you show up very optimistically. You know, oh, if I run 2,500 miles a week, 3,000 miles a week, and then you get there and you realize they control everything. And when you get 1,500 miles in a week, they get their truck payments, but you don't make anything. You know, you may make 500 bucks a week, and that's nothing to be an over-the-road truck driver, uh, you know, especially leasing, owning the, you know, like you're responsible for the truck with that kind of money. So the first one was that. They, you know, they, they just uh, nitpick you to death with little fees and little things like that. So, um, you know, I've made videos about Western Express and my experiences there. The second one was a company that, and this is really where I learned about your, you know, the truck is your asset. The second one, they paid a little better. They paid me for all the miles I ran. It wasn't short miles. But then when it came time to do something to the truck, I had no say so in it, even though I was paying for it. Really? You know, they went to change. Really? Yeah, they went to change tires on the truck. They took it out of my maintenance fund and they put, they went from low profiles to, you know, 11 R 22 and a half, which are tall, you know, it's taller rubber. And it affected the gear ratio of the truck, which affects your fuel economy. And uh, they basically told me I was lucky that I got what I got, you know? So um, <laughs> I was like, well, I, you know, I'm making the truck payment. I'm buying the tires, but I can't choose what goes on there, you know? Um, so that's really when I said, okay, lease purchase isn't for me anymore. They control too much of it. What is it going to take for, you know, me to buy a truck, you know? And honestly, it's, it wasn't that difficult. Um, I bought my first truck from the MHC dealership in Nashville <laughs> and, uh, I put, yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, I put like, I think I put like 6,000 down on that truck and, you know, I had like a, I don't know. My payment was like eleven hundred a month. It was way better than doing a lease. So what? Well, okay, and, uh, let's, let's stop you right there, real carrier. quick. So a thousand dollars a month. What was your lease payment a week when you were leasing? Oh, that, yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, so at Western Express, uh, it's been a few. It's been a few years back, but I believe it was in the ballpark of seven hundred dollars a week, and. <laughs> So it's a big difference. It's a big difference. And uh, on the uh, second lease purchase I did, it was uh, $605 a week on that one. Man, so, um, you know, we're starting to tell you guys, you know, we're here to just tell you the truth. You know, if you jump onto any mega carrier and you're going to do a lease program, they are going to destroy you. Your weekly payments will be as much as owner operators monthly payments. So think about that real quick. You're going to have to work four times as hard as the owner operator that gets to keep more money. It right. definitely is not made the leasing program. And there's nothing wrong with it because there's people that are successful in leasing, but just know this, if you are successful in leasing and you're actually making money in leasing, then if you go owner operator, you'll actually make double or triple your money. So you should be very excited about that if you're leasing right. now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. If I'm watching this, I might feel a little upset. Yes. Fast. You know, like, man, I'm paying four times as much as cash for my truck, but I'm making less money. But don't think about it that way. <laughs> if you're successful as a lease operator, you'll kill as an owner operator, you know. And um, you know, <laughs> right. That, that leads us to our next one. Uh, so how to be successful in reefer hauling? Okay, for anyone that's just jumping on the show right now, we're here with Cassius King. Cassius King has been in the reefer hauling business. He's been in trucking since 2006. He's done two leases himself with mega carriers far way back in the past, and he couldn't even make it work. And now he's here today to just give us some tips on how to be successful in reefer hauling. So now that everybody's up to uh, pace. Oh, and the other thing is I went out and I got three mother trucker hats made, 
and Cash is uh, Cash is King is gonna show some of uh, uh, our subscribers some love, and you'll be the one to pick uh, whoever you want. You know, you'll you'll be Baby Jesus on this one, and you get to pick who wants to win a hat, and I'll ship them out. You know, but um, before I get started again, please let let everyone know uh, that you have a YouTube channel and what you do on that YouTube channel, just so people can get a quick update. Yeah, we uh, we just try to help people get to the money, you know? Like, if you're a owner-operator or if you're a lease purchase person and you want to get out of that lease purchase, um, you know, you doing what I did is not very hard. It's not a lot of risk involved, but it is a huge level up from doing lease purchase. And uh, I also do some company reviews on there. So if you're a company driver, and, you know, you may stumble up on a company you've uh, you've been thinking about. No, I appreciate so I, I that. I just try to uh, help no, people. No, so I know. So I'm just letting all these mother truckers know because uh, I believe that they trust in me. And I'm here to, to let you guys know that Cash is King. He's not recruiting for a company. He's not doing anything. He's just giving his information because – He's gone so many years himself, like I have, where we just didn't make any money, you know. So, right. Let's let's touch on this topic of how to be successful in reefer hauling, and we could open that up a little bit into just trucking as well. What should you right. be making as a company driver, and what should you be making as an owner operator? I mean, these people are out here for three hundred and sixty five days, and they're turning thirty five thousand a year. And they don't know if that's good or bad. And, you know, trucking leads to depression. You don't know if your neighbor's having fun with your wife. You know, you know, someone might be at home walking your dog. Yeah. Okay. I'm just keeping it real. Trucking is stressful <laughs> on so many levels that when it comes right. down to it, we just need to know. So what are your thoughts about this? And, you know, speak freely. Uh, you know, we're not trying to hurt feelings here, but, you know, where should people be with as a company driver? What are your thoughts in reefer hauling? My loss some reception real quick. Hey, I hear you now. You hear me? We're back. We're back. That's why we do it live, baby. Um, so what is your thoughts about that? You know, from the company yeah, so, perspective. Uh, for... Right. And, uh, you know, I'm not here to convince people to do reefer. I just want to put it out there, you know, so they can see what it's like. Um, you know, same way with my revenue that I make. Um, I don't put it out there to brag or try to, you know, get in a pin match with somebody else. You know, if you make more than me, I'm happy for you. Congratulations. Uh, if you don't make as much, uh, I want to try to get you up to that level because we all work too hard out here to be, you know, slumming it. So I think as a company driver, and uh, I think if you're not making more than like 75000 a year, uh, I would definitely be looking around at other companies that could get me there. Really? Are uh, we talking gross you know, here or are we talking net, Cash? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think gross. I think as a company driver, you know, minimum you should be thinking 75 if you're out here all year long you know you're you're doing their schedule um you know there, there's no reason like there's a lot of companies paying you know 50 60 cents a mile these days as a company driver really so would you and say that's solo that's, that's not even teaming really so would you say that should be the standard uh don't look for anything under 60 yeah. cents a mile or 50 cents what are your thoughts yeah, probably 50. Uh, I would really, you know, uh, they would have to have some really good benefits or something like that for me to be interested under 50 because, um, you know, like I said, it, you need to be like 75, 80. If they can't get you there, um, I'd be I'd be looking somewhere else if I was a company driver these days because there's a lot of companies that, that can get you there. You know, you got to get out. You got to talk to people. You got to, you know you got to build some relationships or just get out and talk to random people. You know, if there's a company you like, maybe talk to their driver, you know, like um, I would do whatever it took to get myself out of that, uh, you know, low paying company that I didn't like to work for, um, you know. Right. No, I hear you. No. So for all you guys, 
you know, I feel, I feel you sometimes, you know, we don't know our value, you know, and that's hard to say, but it, it happens that way that we don't know our value. And, and so if anyone is a company driver now and you have a couple years experience, you should be making that 75, 80 K, you know what I'm saying? So just think of that. Now let's flip that to the owner operator side, because first off, Cash is on the road all year long. So when we're talking for him to make 150000 net, he's working his ass off. We're not trying to downplay this at all. We're not trying all to right. say that. Say you, that. Could, you could just stay. <laughs> Give me one second. We're on a live real quick. But I got a knock on the door. Yeah, so while he's uh, working on that, I got three things people always ask me. Number one is who I'm leased to. I don't talk about that. Um, the second one, is it a good time to become an owner-operator? That's a personal thing. And a lot of people ask me why ask I don't have my own authority. Oh, real quick. Talk to the people. Yeah. Answer some questions for just a quick second. Uh, I have my Corvette parked outside and uh, the guy that needs to uh, – don't, don't live in a gated community, people. Don't live in a gated community with HOAs and don't pay $1,000 a month for that bullshit because then you're going to have to move what I got to do real quick. So two, three minutes max. I'll be right back. You guys stay tuned. Answer some questions, Cash. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Gotcha. But yeah, a lot of people ask me, uh, you know, uh, is it a good time to become an owner operator? I think a lot of that comes down to uh, it's a personal thing. You know, are you ready? Do you have the confidence? Have you educated yourself? And a lot of people ask me why I don't get my own authority. I actually had my own authority before. Uh, just because you have your own authority does not mean you're going to make more money. Um, it does come along with a lot more work, so it should pay more. But, um, you know, you're responsible for everything when you get your own authority. You're responsible for the billing. You're responsible for booking the loads. You're responsible for everything. So being leased onto a small carrier, um, you know, I can book my own loads or I can have them book loads for me. Right now I have the carrier I'm leased to looking for loads coming out of the area that I'm going to be delivering to tomorrow. And, uh, you know, they've already called me a couple times today with options. Um, you know, it's my decision whether I go or I don't. So I don't have to sit there and watch the load board all day. So, when you get your own authority, there's a lot more work involved. So technically it should pay more, but you got to, you know, you got to work that out for yourself if that's what you want to do. Um, you know, I really do. And uh, let's see, has anybody got any questions? Let's see. Uh, how do you find your loads? Daryl Beavers. Thanks, Daryl. Appreciate that. So uh, mostly off the load board, the company I'm leased on to has a few connections uh, so we do get some emails with some load options through emails, uh, you know, and those are more direct. So those usually pay better, you know, because the broker on the load board hasn't taxed them as hard. So, um, you know, that's that's usually uh, how we get them, mostly from the load board. Uh, what's that Peterbilt shirt, Team Freightliner all the way? Yeah, if you give me a free shirt, I will wear it uh, for sure. Um, let's see. Deuce Bigelow, I wanted a dry van, but I guess I'm better off with reefer. Uh, just depends on what you like. I'll give you some pros and cons of reefer. A lot of people don't like reefer because of the sound of the reefer running. I don't know if y'all can hear it right now. I've got a negative 10 degree load back there, and that reefer unit's going to run. That reefer unit's going to run day and night. So if you're not prepared for that, uh, that bugs a lot of people. For me, it does not bother me at all. I'm so used to it. Uh, I think about depending on the person, but it takes about a month to get used to a reefer unit running. Um, let's see. Uh, Chris says, bummer, I'm at 47 cents. 47 cents isn't a huge bummer, you know. If you like what you're doing and you like who you're running for, you know, don't let money be the only factor in what you're doing. Um, you know, I'm running really hard right now trying to – um, save up money to buy a house. So, you know, typically I wouldn't run this hard as I do right now, but I'm on a plan, you know, and as long as I'm on a plan, I'm willing to do it. Everybody at the house is on board with it. So we're good with it. 
But, uh, you know, don't let money be the only factor. Uh, Todd says, what I hate about reefer is the amount of time to get unloaded and loaded. Yes, detention times are more with a reefer. But as an owner-operator, that pays off because you get detention pay. Um, I think a lot of company drivers don't like reefer because of the fact um, you know, they don't get the detention money doesn't trickle down to them. You know, the company keeps it as an owner operator. Most of the time when I deserve detention, I get detention pay. So as an owner operator, when you make revenue with the truck sitting still, it's a good thing. It just adds to your, it just adds to your weekly revenue, but it doesn't add to your cost. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 do, where, where was I at? Um, the problem with making 40 to 50 cents a mile, usually you don't get the miles. Um, no, I mean, I, I kind of disagree with that. Um, you know, because I mean, it can happen that way. I'm not saying it's always that way, but, um, you know, a good, I think it's, I think the problem is these, when a carrier gets too big, you know, they don't care if you make money or not. So that's why I like the smaller regional carriers because they want you running. They, they don't have the money to go out and buy a hundred more trucks. You know, they got to make money off the trucks they own. Oh, there's the legend. The legend. Uh, trucking is a lifestyle, guys. You can do this, but uh, if you don't love the game and have patience. Yes, trucking is difficult. And if you are not, uh, in the mindset that you're going to be a success, you will probably fail, uh, because you're going to have days that are just horrible. You know, I dropped my cell phone. I was using my cell phone as a flashlight one time and I dropped it in a snow bank in, uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota, and it was negative 25 degrees outside. And by the time I dug my snow, uh, my cell phone out of a snow bank, the whole front of me was froze like solid. Like my shirt was like crispy. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like I got back in the truck. It took like three hours before I could feel my fingers good again. I've never been as cold. I mean, I almost just left the cell phone. If I hadn't been in the middle of nowhere, I would have left it. But, you know, I think back to days like that. Anytime I'm having a bad day, I just think, you know, at least my phone's not in a snowbank. So, you know, I the but you're going to have those, <laughs> you're going to have those days out here, right? Like, they're no, going to happen, you know? <laughs> you know, and, you know, so, and sorry about that, everyone. Uh, don't live in a neighborhood where everybody thinks you uh, are some sort of a, a, a drug dealer or something. You know, when I moved into my neighborhood, the first thing they asked me is they said, what do you do for a living? And I said, why? And they said, you know, well, you can't afford this house, you know, like you're, you're young. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, that's like the rudest thing I've ever heard anyone say in my life. <laughs> But then I Tell guess it you're an adult <laughs> film star. Well, you know, it, I guess it makes sense because uh, they're like, what do you do? And I was like, I move people. And they're like, oh, illegal <laughs> moving <laughs> of human. <laughs> no, no, right. Just furniture, just furniture people. So, you know, getting back to that question. Um, so company drivers, you should be looking at least 50 cents plus as a company driver. And um, as far as the owner operator, where are we looking at? Uh, what kind of money should you really be making? Well, let's put it like this. If an, if a company driver should be making like 1500 to 2000 a week to be in that 75 to 100 range. Got you. As, an, as a self-employed person, there's things you're going to have to take on uh, like, you know, self-employment taxes, you know, uh, insurance. You're going to have to buy your own insurance. You know, these are things that you need to add on, you know, to think about when you think about your revenue, you know? So like if you net a hundred thousand as a self-employed person, you know, you're probably going to pay an extra 7%, 7 to 10% in self-employment taxes. Mm. You got to buy your insurance, you know, so you're, you're down in that like 80,000 range now. Uh, so yeah, I think, I think a hundred, 125 is kind of the minimum net as a self-employed person because you're working more, you know, you're, 
you're having to do a lot of things that, you know, you're having to pay your own taxes and things like that. So you need to make more to compensate yourself for that extra work. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to become an owner operator so I can work less. Um, most of the time when you start a business, you work a lot more than you would as a company employee. So uh, now there, there are ways you can, you know, work to a goal or maybe if you start a certain way, you can work less. But most people become self-employed because they have that drive. They have that want to, you know, make more and work more. No, I, pre I appreciate you for that. And so, you know, when thinking about this now, when we, when we really talk about, and we're, I mean, we're just talking about your situation. Cause I remember when I did talk about, I put up a, a community thing that said, you know, learn how to make a hundred to $125,000 and people owner operators are like bashing that that's low. That's not a lot of money. So, right. you know, Truth be told, if you're working your ass off and you're running extremely hard, okay, we could get to uh, you don't we don't have to get to how you exactly run it with what company or what have you, but we could talk about how someone else could jump onto a company and what they can do. But right. off camera, I was like, so how much can you make net? You're like, I work all year long. I'm trying to make I'm making 150 to 165, you know. Right. And so those numbers sound crazy to me for somebody that might be watching this right now as a company driver and watching this, like I'm making 35,000 net. How is cash yep. making 150 net? Right? So what's the mindset of a person to make 150,000 net take home? How long do you have to stay on this road for? I mean, how much sacrificing are you really doing? Yeah, I've got a, I've got a pretty strict goal in mind, you know, the family's on board with it. I'm on board with it. We're saving up uh, for the next two years. I'd like to put about $100,000 down on a house in Minneapolis. So I'm running it. a lot harder than I normally I would. I love it. So, but here's the thing. Most guys working for a company, I say guys, people. Um, when I say guys, I mean everyone. Um, so most people could make the same amount of money I'm making right now. You know, it's not like I have some secret sauce. Um, there's a lot of small carriers out there that would love to have the people, you know, and, and like, I think if you're going to lease onto a carrier, you probably need to have about 20 grand saved up, go put you five or 6,000 down on, uh, your truck, get your insurance set up, probably going to leave you like 10 grand as an emergency fund, you know, maybe have your credit repaired a little bit. So like the different, if it comes down to do I put a couple thousand dollars on a credit card or do I go out of business, you know, have that option. Uh, it's not that I'd want you to use the credit card, you know, but if it means going out of business and losing everything, yeah, work on your credit a little bit. But if, if I told people save up 20 grand, use some of it to go out and buy a 40, $50,000, you know, fuel efficient, not beat to death truck, you know, that forty to fifty thousand dollar range, you can find decent aerodynamic trucks that don't have a million miles on them. Would you invest twenty thousand dollars in yourself if you knew you were going to make a hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars every year that you worked just like you're working now as a company driver? I love For, it. You know, until you don't want to do it anymore. I love that. I love that. So, you know, for a lot of people. There needs to be a goal in place, you know, and I, I, I think that's important for everyone to know. And a lot of people on here that are watching this either for educational reasons or watching it for fun because they're already making the money and they're just trying to see how factual you and I are because people love right. catching us on our bullshit. Right. Right. Like, you know, it is what it is, but you got to have a plan in place, people, because if you do not have a plan in place, you will not be pushed to make more money because I guarantee you right now, if you didn't want that goal of putting a hundred thousand dollars down so you could buy that beautiful home that you want to buy for your family, you probably wouldn't run as hard. It's, it's, it's the no. damn truth, right? Right. And so have you ever made yeah. this type of money before having this goal or no cash? Um, I owned a business outside of trucking that did very well for a few years. 
Um, and, you know, I used to tell a lot of the employees that work there, you got to have the want. The want's the only thing I can't teach. I can teach you how to do this. I can teach you how to do everything. But if you have no want, it's useless because you won't do anything with it. So that's a lot of, um, you know, the money side of it is if somebody wants the money, you know, I can show them and kind of, you know, give them ideas on how to get to the money. But, um, yeah, the freight market, as far as the money right now, the freight market is really good right now. Uh, you know, reefer loads are unbelievable. And that is one reason I stick to reefer is because um, reefer rates, reefer has a better potential to spike on rates. Um, so you talking yeah. about this now, I this was is, up in the, <laughs> you talking about this now. I just want to put that up. Cause I just thought about this. People want to break down of a typical load to make profit. So keep on going. Sorry. Sorry for cutting you off, but, um, yeah. this is something right here that we're kind of segueing to as well. So maybe we can talk about a typical load, an average load that maybe yep. someone will see and how we could break that down too. Yep. And I break down a lot of the loads I do uh, in specific videos just for those loads. Uh, in addition to the weekly recap, um, you know, I go specific on certain loads. But yeah, like uh, with Reefer, you know, there's more potential for a spike in rates in certain small pockets. You know, you can hit. I was up in uh, western Minnesota the other day. There was like 10 loads that were paying really good. Two of those really had to move. And there was nobody within 100 miles with a reefer. So when, when you got them like that, you know, you, you can kind of name your rate on those kind of loads. Uh, and yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. When more than one you know, when there's more loads out there than there are trucks, uh, you know, that's that's when you, you know, you, you do some, uh, you know, Dr. Evil, you know, like, you know, you got them, you know, you got them. <laughs> so a typical breakdown of a, <laughs> the typical breakdown of a load, um, let's see, I can do, all right, so my last load, I did a video about this. If anybody wants to check this video out, it's my last video I put up. So my last load was South Dakota to Pennsylvania. Um, it was 1,500 total miles. It was 1,340 loaded, 160 deadhead. So that's about a 10% deadhead. Um, it weighed 13,000 pounds. A lot of people think all reefer loads are super heavy. Um, I find it about the same as dry van, honestly. Mm. Uh, you get a lot of loads that are just one or two pallets, you know, uh, you know, when, you know, a restaurant needs one pallet of lettuce, you know, it's got to go. It's got to go. So this load was a cheese load, but it was like uh, some, uh, I don't know, maybe some higher end cheese. It wasn't a load of Velveeta, that's for sure. But uh, it was 13,000 pounds and it paid $5,300. And that's uh, 353 a mile. Um, of course, I'm leased to an 80-20 split carrier. They made 53. I made 4240, which is 283 a mile to the truck. I spent $435 on diesel. Um, I spent $30 on reefer fuel. Reefer fuel is not a big expense. I know a lot of people say, uh, you know, they don't do reefer because of detention time and mm -hmm. reefer fuel. That's the two things. Get paid for that detention time, number one. Don't let them set you for free. Um, you know, and the second one, reefer fuel, maybe 100 to 200. I'm usually in between 100 and 200 a week on reefer fuel. Don't let it scare you. It's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. Um, you know, like this load paid $5,300 gross and had $30 in reefer fuel. It's it's nothing. Um, $20 in DEF I spent on that load and $70 in tolls. I do go around a lot of tolls if I have time. Um but on this one four-day load, after variable expenses were taken out, uh, I made three thousand six hundred and eighty-five dollars. Um, and wait up, you're making more than me moving furniture sometimes. 
It's the truth. Yeah. I have to load and unload. That pisses me off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, you know, reefer is like all free. You know, you got your good areas and your bad areas, you know, but I tell people, don't be afraid. Like I go to Florida a lot. A, a lot of people, they are just, you know, they get told over and over again, you don't go to Florida. You can't get loads out of Florida. That's fine. Because what I want to do is I take the national average on reefer rates and I need a round trip like Minnesota to Florida. So what I'll do is if I'm making, you know, I want the average of like 250 a mile. Say I want to make 250 a mile average. So if I'm getting, you know, $4 going in, you know, I'm expecting a dollar coming out. So round trip, it's 250 average, um, you know. You got you got to learn your freight lanes. That's a big thing of being owner operators. Learning your freight lanes. Uh, I recommend pick pick like one lane and just learn learn it. You know, like um, you know, most of my loads go into North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and they come right back to Minnesota. I'm just back and forth on that lane because I know that lane. I've got connections in that lane. Um, it's a it's a good reefer lane as well. A lot of meat production. No, that's no, that's good. So you definitely recommend that if someone's going to run reefer, whatever lane they're going to run, it should be from where their house is, though, right? It should be house to out, right? So don't go all over the place. Just how long should they stay in that lane? Or can you really be successful just figuring out that one lane? Because then you have more customer base, more knowledge. What are your thoughts? Right. I think at first you pick one, maybe two lanes and focus on those just out and back. Because, uh, you know, like I said, you, you need to learn that lane. And when you go, like, when you go all over the place, it's a lot of information to be constantly trying to keep up with because, Reefer has is very um, every like region of the country is seasonal, mm. you know, so you'll get better rates out of certain yeah. areas. So, you know, well, you know, like let's take Florida again, for example, in Florida in March and April and May, you have berries, sweet corn, watermelons. Rates are really good. So you don't get as much going in because you're going to get good money coming out. You know, the, the, the rate, the brokers know how to keep these rates balanced, but let's say it's July and watermelons, berries, and corn are over. So if you don't know that lane and you think, oh, it's good getting 250 a mile to go into Florida. Well, it's going to be a dollar a mile coming out. So mm. now you're, you know, you're, you're at like, you know, a dollar 80 a mile round trip. Uh, so you know, you got, I think it is better to focus on a few lanes, a couple lanes in the beginning, just so you don't get uh, taken advantage of. So how much on average should you be making on a load as far as, you know, dollar per mile? I know everyone's cost per mile is different and they kind of have to figure that out before just say someone in your situation um, or someone that has like a, you know, a, uh, Fifteen hundred dollar payment, twelve hundred dollar payment a month, something like that. What's what's the best way for them to calculate this? Because people get very confused and, and how to calculate, and you know what's the best average, and they don't know if they're really making money. Uh, they should be making as much as they can. No, I'll get more specific than that. <laughs> but uh, you know, don't sell us out. Don't don't do it for cheap. Um, but no, it really depends on your region and what your, you know, what time of year it is. But I like to start with looking at the national average reefer rate. How do you find, uh, that? How do you find that? I'm and a dummy. How do I find you it? Can, you can Google it. The DAT load board puts that out for anyone. Um, you know, if you have, a, if you have access to uh, a paid load board subscription, there's a lot to be learned on there. And, uh, but you can Google these numbers, you know, just to get an idea of like, you know, where things are. Um, so I base my trips on the national average. Right now, uh, last week it was like 260 a mile. 
So I know if, you know, freight going into an area is paying $2 a mile, the freight coming out better be paying three twenty a mile to get two sixty average. Mm. You know what I mean? You, you add your in and your out rate and divide them by two and they should equal the national average. And that's, that's how I negotiate. Wait up. Say that one more time. So I can, so I can understand it myself. Say that one more time. Okay. Let's, let's make it round numbers just for an example. Let's say the national average is $2 a mile. Okay. So, I'm there. right. If you're getting, 50 cents a mile going in. Okay. So you want to average $2. So in and out's got to equal $4 per mile. Cause you're going to divide it by two. Right. Right. So let's say going in is a dollar coming out better be $3. So you, you get two, you know, if you can, if you add the one going in and the three coming out, that makes $4. You divide that by two, your average is two dollars a mile. So it's really that simple. Well, <laughs> you don't always get that. And trust me, there are brokers that if they think you don't understand, and that's why I say focus on one or two lanes. Right. Because it right. never it never fails. Like if you look on the load board and that 15 day average says this much, like if you don't know it well, that 15 day whatever can trick you because Let's say I did I did this back uh, like uh, spring before last. So I took a load going into Florida at what I thought was paying OK. And then I realized when I got down to Florida, the berry season was over. There was no more sweet corn. So I took a load into Florida way too cheap because I thought there was going to be loads coming out. Mm. There was no. It wasn't like they were paying low. There were no loads available at all coming out of Florida. Oh, you had to deadhead out? So I did I deadhead all the way back to like Atlanta. Georgia. Yep. So, always Georgia. Yep. Georgia, yep. Georgia. Yeah. And a lot of times I'll go straight back to Tennessee because a lot of guys could deadhead back to Georgia. So I'll deadhead past them and go all the way to Tennessee. So you learn that's why I say focus on a couple routes because you do not want to start uh, doing things like that, going into dead areas for low money, you know, like, and that was literally, I'd been to Florida like a week and a half before and did that same run. And it changes that quick in some places. So, you know, like, uh, let's see, Michigan, you know, they have a late uh, harvest because, you know, it's a colder area, um, you know, so you have, you gotta, you'll learn all this if you get into reefer and you really want to know about it and learn about it. Um, there's, there's a lot of little, a lot of little, uh, like seasonal areas and pockets. I know a lot of guys that just follow the produce around the country throughout the year. Is there a and, website for that or anything, or is just, how do you learn that? Uh, over time. I mean, there's a lot of guys that talk about it. I, I talk about it on YouTube. Um, you know, like, when the potato harvest comes in in uh, Idaho, uh, those rates get really good out there. But then it gets hard to find anything good going in because the rates coming out are so good. You know, everybody's chasing that rate. Right. right. So a lot of times when people chase rates, I just stay in my lane because it even it'll drive my lane up because everybody else is chasing rates. You know no, what I mean? Like, no, I love that. I think uh, what we got to end up doing sometime is we need to do a breakdown in your lane from um, Minnesota, basically all the way down to the Carolinas to um, Florida. Yep. From January to December. Yep. And so that way, guys will be successful. You'll What will end up happening, you're going to see a lot of guys park next to you all the time, and you're going to be like, <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> Well, you know, the uh, the DAT low board does a good job of spotlighting hot areas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys will stay, they'll run to those hot areas and get those good pants. Like uh, right now, Minnesota and Colorado are paying pretty good because it's turkey time. Right. And those are two, right. two large turkey producing states. So, you know, you'll see guys going into those areas to get those turkey loads. But there may not be anything going into those areas paying good because everybody's kind of trying to get there. You know what I'm saying? Oh no! But See, and that's and that's the thing, Cash is that um, you're like, oh, 
Running reefer is just like dry van. Yeah. Hell no, it's not. You got to know seasons. You got to know where you're going. You got to know harvest and all this stuff. Hey, a good dry van and a good flatbed person does the same thing, really. Uh, you know, you, you know when it's time to run seasonal. And um, so, yeah, I mean, reefer is just its own, you know, its own segment. But as a good owner operator, no matter if it's flatbed, tanker, whatever, you know, certain areas have their seasons that, you know, you want to, you know, like when construction season starts, you know, all the flatbed guys know all the hot areas that, you know, where they make shingles, where they make drywall, you know, things like that. So, um, but yeah, reefer is, and, and that's why I think it's good to, uh, you know, instead of just going and getting your own authority, Start out for a little while with a smaller carrier that cares that you succeed. I was going to ask you they that can now. Teach you. Because, Cash, honestly, you have what it takes to have your own MC number, right? And so you could do that yourself. So why do you go the route of – now, I'm not bashing you because I do the same shit. I get 80% of my loads, and my dispatcher takes 20, but they got to find me the moves. I want the straight moves CEO. They are they hit me one today and I said no to it. I might shut down for the year because I'm allergic to you know snow, you know. But oh my god. <laughs> but you know, it's one of those things where is it better to run your own MC? I know you're not doing that now, but you have friends that do. Yeah. What what's the biggest difference? Uh, I've had my own numbers in the past. I got them at a really bad time, so we'll just leave that out of it. I got them in 2008. <laughs> Horrible market. Boy, I stepped in and I stepped on a landmine right there. So, uh, but there, there's both. There's good and bad in both. Um, you know, like you can make more with your own MC as far as you know more money to you because you're not paying a percentage to someone. But at the same time, you're responsible for payroll. You're responsible for taxes. You know, like uh, the company I'm leased on to, they file my IFTA, I pay it. Um, right. You know, right. I let them find a, most of the loads I haul. They look them up and find them. I mean, I have the final, you know, like they called me on a couple today out of Kansas City where I'm unloading in the morning, you know. So instead of me having to sit around and look at the load board all day, you know, if I got my own authority, I'd have to be doing that, um, you know. But if I was willing to do those things, I could make a little bit more money. Because, you know, they wouldn't be taking the 20%. But I think there's good and bad in both. Here's my take on it. If you're going to be a one-man, one-truck operation, I honestly feel like you're better on leasing to a carrier. Mm. Because yeah. you got some support there. You've got, uh, you know, you got some, like, connections already just, you know, via being part of that carrier. If you're going to build a fleet, if you're one of these guys that want a fleet and you're going to start at, you want to add on some truck, I think you're better off to get your own authority and work it that way because you're going to need, you know, you can build it for yourself that way. But I think if you're just, if you're cool with being one man, one truck, and you want to make that as efficient as you can, uh, I, it's, it's pretty close money to just, um, you know, lease onto a carrier. No, I agree because, uh, I'd be moving. I I told this story before, but about a month and a half ago, Cash, I moved the vice president of Walt Disney. Nice. And he loved the move so much, he took my whole family to Disney World, right? And it was an amazing thing. But let's keep it real. I didn't have that connection. My company does. They're right. a, they're the one that has it. So yep. it's just one of those things. If you if you go with a, a and my company as well is kind of a smaller mom and pop company, but they have the connections. So if you think you could find the connections, you're willing to build it, do it yourself. But I'm right. telling you, if you just like running hard and let them find you the best loads possible, and you just say yay or nay, you're it's just constant. You're just making money, you know. And let's be real, Cash. I am not an organized person. 
I am not. I have an accountant. I have a, all these. I have a team of people, even just with my one little truck, right? And my little right. businesses that I have. Half the time, I'm like, do I have a, do I have a driver's license? You know, I got to call somebody <laughs> to ask them. Like, I have health insurance, right? Like, they're like, yeah. yeah, you do, you do. You know, so you have to be real with yourself too, right, Cash? If you're a <laughs> unorganized person, but you're willing to work hard. You probably will not do well with your own numbers, but you might do really well uh, leasing on with your own truck to another carrier. You know, right? I so, think it's a good so. step too. Also, like even if you have ambitions to have your own numbers, but you're you know maybe a little apprehensive about it, I think it's a good step to just buy the truck and then lease it on to a carrier. Um, you know, because you'll make better money versus you know being lease purchase or company driver. Uh, so I think it's, I think it's a good idea to, you know, try it for a while. It's like a big part of, you know, why I think people can easily get to where I'm at is because there's not a whole lot of, um, there's not a whole lot of effort you really got to put into it. There's not a whole lot of, uh, you know, risk. It's basically, you know, work hard, for however long, save up, you know, 20 to $25,000, depending on your situation at your house, you know, but if you lease onto a carrier, chances are you're probably going to get a paycheck from running some loads, you know, a week or two into it, you know, right. a lot of these right. smaller carriers, you know, like they can pay you within a week. So there's not a whole lot of risk of going without a check, you know, and, um, some of these smaller carriers, you know, they, they, they got a lot of connections also as far as, uh, you know, shops. If you need your truck worked on, they can help you out with that. You know, there's things like that. I, I think it's – um, I think that's why a lot of people go lease purchase. They feel like it's really easy and it's no risk involved. And let me tell you, in business, if you've got no capital and you've got no risk involved, you're not getting the rewards. Ooh. Um I amen to that, brother. That's the that's damn how truth. Works. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the damn truth. And, and I like what you just brought up right there because let's be honest here, people. Like, you're not going to come out having the connections, man. It, it, it's just the truth. You know, you could do it. I'm not saying you can't, but it's super hard. And I like what you brought up because I can only say it for my moving business, Cash, but in my company, when I'm done with the load, they'll pay me even if they didn't get paid yet. Yep. So you need to find a company that's small but big enough where they can at least float you the money you deserve. Because there's a lot right. of these small companies out there where you've spent the money and you finished the load, but they won't pay you until they get paid. And what if they get paid right. net 30, net 60? Now you're using a factoring company. Now you're having to pay interest. Now you're having to do all these things. It's not worth it. So right. from that, you were saying, Cash, there's other small companies. Where do people start looking for these companies? You know, Just say they have the experience. They've done two, three years. Now they're ready, but they're not ready to get their MC numbers. What do they Google up to find a, a company that would be good, that gives them the 80-20? You know? Uh, you know, Craigslist, but most of the times you got to dig past that first or second page because that first and second page is bought. You know, that's <laughs> adver that's advertised right there. You know what I mean? Those people paid to be on that first and second page. Gotcha. Uh, you gotcha. know, um, I don't have Facebook, but I've heard people say, you know, like, uh, you know, I did look up a small carrier on Facebook. You know, sometimes you'll see them on there. Get out and talk to some people, you know. Um, I like being leased onto a carrier that's near where I live, based out of where I live. Mm. That way I know, like, they got some connections, and normally they have their connections close to where they're located. So, you know. You can and home and see your four kids, you right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I can get through the house pretty much no problem, you know. I uh, may not make as much money coming to the house, but leaving Minnesota, I always do really well. So, um, you know. I don't mind running to the house for a little less than, you know, um, you know what I would have made going to a different city because I know I'm going to do really good coming out of Minnesota and I can park the truck at their lot. You know, that's another reason I like a local carrier. Um, you know, hell yeah. No, I hate paying for truck parking. It's the worst. 
I, I think my truck is still at the company that I park it at. My buddy there is the warehouse manager. I just park it and give him a key. And, you know, here and there, I just tip him out, you know? We're homies, but right. I think my truck is there <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm horrible. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of stress with having your own MT. You need your own yard. You need all yeah. these things. Uh, at times, you'll feel like you're enslaved to the game, believe me. You know, um, so at the end of this, almost before we get to questions and answers, um, you really feel that if someone goes the steps that we talked about today, from getting some experience for a couple of years and then jumping to a, a small carrier instead of doing the lease route, save up about 20 grand. Yeah. They can make 150,000 net a year if they work hard, if they stay in that truck. Yeah, Especially in a good market like this, yeah, yeah. When you know, when I told you a hundred to hundred twenty thousand, I was talking kind of on a mediocre year, you know. Oh, so, man. Uh, oh man, you know, it, it's like invest twenty grand in yourself and watch things change. Wow, uh, you know, not wow. only not only the motivation of saving the twenty thousand, because let's you know, a lot of people when they first get into trucking, they've never had twenty grand in the bank. So no just idea. the fact of saving no it idea. and knowing you can do it, and then you'll start, you'll get your, you know, you get your finances straight because you want to save that twenty grand. So then when you start making that hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand a year, you've already got your finances straight, and things things get real interesting at that point because you got a lot of money coming in, and uh, you know you you've kind of got a few things worked out already. So yeah, I think invest twenty grand in yourself. And, uh, you know, watch some big things happen. Man, I love that. So uh, before we get to the Q&As, if I put Cash is King's YouTube channel down there. And the reason why is because uh, if you guys want some information straight up of what he's doing, he's showing his page stubs, he's showing his expenses, he's showing everything every damn day, every damn week. You can get that. But from that cash, I mean – if people want to look to you for mentorship in a sense, in that way, I mean, if they jump on your channel, would you be willing to give out your email and helping a guy out that might want to be running your lanes or want to make 150,000? Cause there's a lot of guys out here. They don't care. They're yeah. working all across the nation, making pennies, peanuts, whatever you have it. So if they could run your lane as it is, and if you were okay with that, you know, there's a lot of guys that would love some mentorship, brother. There's there's plenty of freight out here for everybody. Um, you know, and I thought about it. If you think about if the, uh, you know, some of these major, uh, you know, mega carriers that got all these people doing lease purchase, if that ceased and that stopped tomorrow and all these people went out and bought their own trucks, I think rates would go up because. Really? I do. Because. These big mega carriers, they don't care if they make money hauling freight. They're making money selling trucks. You know what I mean? The money, the money's in the school and the truck. Like they don't care what they haul freight for. And let me tell you, when you when you run a business, you care what you haul rates. You you care what you're hauling for. You know what the rate is. And you, like I said, make you know get as much as possible. And that's that's how people become when they become business owners. They no longer, you know, they're not uh, giving away their services. You know, they realize the value that's there. Oh, I love that. I love that because, you know, I partner up with the dealership and we do wholesale truck sales. Right. And sometimes we, we call up these guys at Swift, Prime and all that. They all own dealerships. And here's the yeah. thing. I'm not talking shit about any of these mega carriers. But let me ask you mother truckers a question. If you could buy a truck once and sell it five times. Would you do it? <laughs> Seriously. Right? Yeah. Because that's what they're doing. They buy the truck. You pay for the truck. They sold it once. After six months, you finally find out. Sometimes if you're smart, six months. After a year, you find out you're not making any money. Don't worry. Give the truck back. The truck back. They just paid off the truck a little bit more. Then they got the next guy come in. They could do yeah. that at least four times. Because after about 500,000 miles... They're going to go back and then sell the truck again on the, the used market. So think about that. They're selling the truck five times. What a strategy, right? 
most mega fleet uh, lease purchases are designed to pay the truck. The payments they have weekly are designed to pay a truck off in 36 months. So if they can keep a guy in a truck or t- if it takes 10 people to get it to 36 months, they don't care. As long as they get it for 36 months. And then what happens is they take that truck and they go put it on their used lot for fifty to $70,000. That truck's already been paid for. And now it's on a used lot for fifty to seventy thousand dollars, and they'll sell it, and it's like a fifty thousand dollar bonus. Would you care? Would you care what rate you're hauling freight for? Like, would you be going for the high dollar freight if you were getting a seventy thousand dollar bonus on a truck every three years? Like, Shoot, I know I wouldn't. <laughs> you know? Hey, I want that guy to get so sick of trucking, but not now in thirty six months. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. You know, and, and so. they play that. They play. That. They play that game too, you know, like when guys get near the end of the lease, like if it's a buyout lease for a dollar, they start they start taking your freight away. They want you to quit. They don't want you to complete, you know. Wow, man. We're, we're, bust- you- hey, we're busting them out today. <laughs> there went, my, there went my, my mega carrier sponsorship right out the window. I just gave away their secrets. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. Believe me, uh, I'm not getting sponsored by any mega carriers anytime soon. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you this much. Uh, no company will dare get close to me. They All they got to do is watch a all couple right. of our videos and say, we can't control these guys, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, that's, that's why it. we do these things, you know? And so let's open it up. But before we do, uh, just want to let everyone know again, uh, Cash the King has been in the game for a very long time. And he's here just helping you guys out how to make money as an owner-operator. So if you guys want some tidbits, if you want some pay stubs, whatever you need, Cash is King has it on his channel, and that's how I got to know Cash anyway. So, you know, let's go into some Q&As, and after that, um, we got three custom mother trucker hats for all you ones that – all you mother truckers that have been on for the last uh, hour or so. You know, your life is very precious, and we are just so thankful because I remember my first live. I think my mom – uh, and me on another phone and then Jenna on two phones. So we had like four people <laughs> on our live. Yeah, that was mine pretty much. You know, um, so, so it's, it's been blessings. I'll, I'll put it out there. I put my email in the description of most of my videos. So if anybody wants to email me, just check out the description on one of my videos. It's cash is king enterprises at gmail.com. And uh, anytime I do a live, I do about, 20 live shows a month i do a lot of lives uh a lot of guys make jokes about that but we put in that work on those lives and um i got a lot of guys that come through that have fleets owner operators for 20 30 years if you got a question the best place to ask it is in one of my lives um i mean those guys like they do not care to help somebody uh that's the that's the thing i'm the most proud about about the community i have is the knowledge and the willingness to educate somebody there's, you know, there's no shame in not knowing, you know, there's shame in not caring. But if you don't know, ask the question, no, you know, like we're not going to make fun of you. I mean, if it's the most basic thing, because uh, other than me, I'm the only person I know that was born knowing everything, but everybody else, you know, they, they got to do it the <laughs> hard way. <laughs> You know, and, you know, wh- why do you think before we get into the Q&A's, why do people hold all these little tidbits? You know, wh- what, what's the thing? Why do you think these truckers uh, do this? Because when we were in it, we were struggling, right? And it's, it's, I feel like no one wants to help us out. And what are your thoughts behind that? I mean. Yeah, I. uh Trucking is such a hard gig, especially over the road. I do not understand all of the infighting and, you know, like it, it's like one person gets a little bit of success and all of a sudden they want to, you know, keep it to themselves. You know what I mean? They want to put it in a bottle, set it in the back and forget about it. And it's like, like not, a, not everybody's coming for you personally, you know, like right. share it. You know, I feel like, I feel like, if all of trucking gets better, you know, and guys stop making the mega carriers richer, you know, like even from when I started trucking in 2006, I feel like the mega carriers just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, 
I mean, more power to them. It's business. But at the end of the day, I don't know many people that have worked for a mega carrier for a long period of time that, uh, or any period of time and that are like, wow, this is a great thing they're doing for me. Um, you know, most of the time people want to get their experience and get out and, um, you know, the sooner, the better, honestly. No, I hear that brother. So I'm going through these Q and A's right now. And you know, if anyone has a question, uh, definitely ask some questions. If you see any that you want to answer, uh, definitely, uh, go ahead and answer some of them cash. You know, okay. I don't have my glasses yeah, I mean, on. I'm blind as a bat right now. You know, uh, big girl says cash is king. Looks like he might have road rage. Oh, what uh, a, I cannot, what that? I cannot <laughs> confirm nor deny that. I cannot confirm nor deny that big girl. Um, I, tr- I, just, road rage, bro. <laughs> I try to stay calm. I try to, man, you know, like it's, it's a long, I got long term goals, so I can't let, uh, you know, I can't let it get to me too bad, but you know how it is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's see if anyone has any questions, man. Oh, look, Christopher says I'm subscribing for sure. Thanks cash. That's what's up, man. You know, that's why we do this stuff. And if you guys have any questions out there or you want to be on the show, either on cash's show or on mine, we don't care. I don't care if you have subscribers. I don't care if you have no subscribers. If you want to help somebody out, Jump on. That's why That's why we do this stuff, you know? The first time you asked me, it made me so nervous. I was like, that guy's got a lot of subscribers. I don't know what to say. Oh, come on, man. I'm a nobody. <laughs> no, the first time you commented on one of my videos, I was like, holy crap, this guy watched my video. He's got like, you know, at the time, you probably had 20,000 subscribers. Oh, man. Um, you know, it really made me nervous. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> I got to step my game up. There's actually people watching this now. <laughs> oh, never that. Okay, let's see. Um, here's a question. What insurance are required if I lease onto the carrier? That's a great question. Right. Um, it will vary per the carrier. Uh, some of them have different things they do for you. Um, where I'm at, um, you know, I'm, I'm responsible for the truck, the cargo, uh, you know, basically all the insurance. Um, so it's a little bit more expensive here, but you know, it's one of those things you, you're going to have some give and takes like, you know, certain carriers will do certain things. Some won't. Um, I was leased on to a carrier years ago that I was only responsible for the Bobtail insurance and the comprehensive insurance. And it was like a hundred bucks a month. I mean, it was super cheap. Um, you know, so it just depends on the on the carrier. Um, you know, you would need to find a carrier you're interested in, and then see what they want from you and what they cover. And then, you know, um, I've I've had my insurance through uh, OOIDA before. I've had it through Progressive before. Um, I have it through uh, independent brokerage right now, and uh, you know, they just they just. Uh, outsource it to the big guys you know the behind the scene insurance people yeah um, you gotta you gotta worry about that sometimes people don't know that most insurance that can cover trucking there's only like three or four of them that actually cover right and so if you call state farm or something like that they're just gonna broker it and get a yep. cut of a cut get a cut of it they'll be the third party of that you know so find, find a brokerage that, uh, you know, doesn't take as big a cut from you. you there know? it is. Like that, that's my, that's what I do. Cause basically when it goes to the big guys, it's all the same price anyway. It's just how much does your broker put a cut on it? Let's see. Is there now? No, that's, that's great right there. Let's see. Uh, any other questions that you want to answer? Uh, King Russell says any company recommendations, uh, it's right before my link uh, when you drop my link there, King Russell. Um, so he says, any company mer- recommendations? Yeah, we listed a few earlier in the uh, live. If you want to go back and check that out. Um, I think I'm not a big fan of recommending companies. I like people to do their own digging and their own research. That way, uh, you know, they know the company more than just saying, you know, what I said about them. Because, um, you know, I... I, I don't know. I wouldn't want people to get into a bad situation because I, I was misinformed and said something, you know, 
No, um, I get it. Um, but don't do Western Express leasing program. <laughs> no, no. Um, I mean, I, I don't recommend leasing at all. You know, I don't, I don't think you should get your truck from where you get your freight. Ooh, um, oh, you know, one. it's kind of like, you know, uh, it's kind of like pooping where you eat. You know, you just don't poop where you eat. So, um, no, that's what's up. No, that, that's a good one. Uh, someone says, what's your opinion about a hurricane trucking company? I've heard mixed reviews. I've, uh, have you heard of them? I've seen them around, but yeah. Yeah, I've seen Hurricane. They got a they got a lot of chicken lights on those trucks. Um, just remember, brokers don't ask you how many chicken lights you have on your truck when you call in to get a load. You know, <laughs> they don't say they don't say. You know, do you got a W nine hundred with lights all over it and a bunch of chrome? They don't care. Um, if if you lease on to Hurricane with a truck, uh, I'm not sure what options they have. I know they have a lease purchase, and uh, like I said, I wouldn't recommend that from anybody just bad business to get your truck from your carrier. Um, it's not that hard to go out and get a truck. No, I it's hear really that. Not. Sensei has a question for you. I just paid off my lease purchase. Is it easier just to drive with a mega carrier or go totally independent? And we've been talking about this. He might have just jumped in right now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, no big deal. Um, I think there's a sweet spot right in the middle. Um, you know, like I said, if, if you're, prepared for all that comes with being in totally independent if you're willing to you know book your own freight do your own billing do all your back you know office tax work and everything you know your 2290s your ifta i mean if you're ready for that then uh you know there's nothing wrong going totally independent i would say if you've got that lease uh just paid off my lease purchase did you get the truck at the end of that or was that just a lease did they take the truck back Mm. Uh, that would be something, but if, if you got the truck from that lease purchase, like if, you know, if they handed you a title, uh, I would say find a sweet spot in the middle and find a small carrier to lease it on to, um, you know, somebody that cares about you, somebody that wants to see you succeed, um, you know, that type of thing. No, I hear you. No, that's, that's good. Um, here's a long one for you to read. <laughs> Freight trucking, freight trucking. What's up, brother? He comes in all my lives, man. He, he's a good guy. I said, uh, may, maybe we could drop him uh, one of the hats there, Asian Mai. He comes into a lot of my lives. Okay, yeah. Today, Cash is the uh, uh, picking the, some people, either asking some good questions or random. Uh, so, you, like I said, you're baby Jesus on this one. We got three hats. <laughs> so, you know. Six pound, nine ounce baby Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I think Frank trucking for this good. This is a good question. I think uh, I, th I think he should get a hat for this. Said so. I've been a company driver for 19 years. Finally, at the point where I want to own my own truck. I run reefer. I live in many Minnesota local and North Dakota and South Dakota. No real OTR finding it a problem to lease onto a company. Advice. Um. Yeah, um, wanting to own your own truck and run reefer in Minnesota is a brilliant idea, first of all. <laughs> reefer companies, they're, they're everywhere up there. I mean, like, it's one of the few places in the country that's like a big metropolitan area that's in a really cold climate, you know? Um, and it, it's Midwest, so that's a, that's a hard three combinations to find. And, um, so, so you're going to do well up there it says, uh, no real OTR finding, uh, no real OTR finding it a problem to lease onto a company advice. Um, I'm not going to say they're going to be the greatest, but, um, let's see Halver van lines, uh, leases on trucks out of Duluth. And, uh, I mean, I don't know what their structure is, but you might want to call them. Uh, lesser out of Egan, Minnesota, maybe one you want to call. I know they lease on trucks. Um, those are a couple of the bigger ones that I know. Um, I mean, you know, you might have to dig it out a little bit and, um, you know, just, just keep digging, just keep digging. It took me a long time to find the carrier in Minnesota I'm with now. Um, you know, like the good ones don't advertise. They don't need people. Nobody leaves, you know, no, you got to dig, that. you got to do that work. No, I heard that. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and uh, answer uh, one more question, and then after that, what we'll do is uh, 
I know you picked one person uh, for the hat already, but for yeah. the other two people, at the end of this, since you guys have been staying here so long, um, put your email in, Cash. Okay. Right? Right. And then the first, the the first two people that email you or or ask a good question that you want to pick as well. Uh, you know, you can email them back and say, hey, you know, you could pick the other two people as well. You know what I mean? And uh, F8 Trucking, uh, also make sure you email Cash so that you could give him your uh, uh, info. Because at yeah. the end of the day, I'm going to need their name, their real name, and their address so I can send these hats. Right. So we'll do that at the very end after we add, uh, answer the last question. And, um, you know, whoever emails you, we'll give it to them that way. That's cool, right? Oh, yep, yeah, works for me. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, so any questions that you want to answer? We'll do one more. Oh, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, this guy, Sat Trans LLC, says I got my CDL, but uh my I got my CDL myself and bought a truck and trailer and went straight to owner operator with zero experience. Whoa. Yes. Um, if you are, if you are in a position to do that, um, you know, the key is to that is a lot of carriers won't want experience before they'll put you on their insurance or let you run their numbers. So, and if you go straight to getting your own authority, insurance can eat you alive. Um, mm. I, I've heard quotes for guys with new CDL, New authority insurance quotes uh, in the like forty to sixty thousand dollar a year range for a new authority and new CDL. Wow! Wow! No, so, I appreciate that. No, so yeah. I'm telling you, everyone on here that's uh, sticking around, Cash has a lot of information, and he is. I call him the master at Reefer. I know there's other people, but Cash is the one that uh, I deem as the master blaster of Reefer hauling. So he knows the rates. He knows the lanes. If you guys want to jump on, uh, you're considering going from company, because that's a lot of times that's what I ask people. They say, Asian, I, I want to be a truck driver. I want to make big money. The first question I ask them is, what kind of hauling do you want to do? And they don't know yeah. because – if you want to go and haul cars, well, I'm sorry, you know, going to prime ain't going to help you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so at the end of the day, uh, if refer is something that you do want to do and you want more information, uh, subscribe to cash, uh, cash. Yeah. If you can for me, uh, can you put your, uh, YouTube channel? And if you yeah. could put your email and all you mother truckers on there, Cash is going to pick three people, you know, at the end of the day, uh, email him, reach out to him, tell him you want a hat or hit one of his uh, lives or uh, YouTube videos and say, hey, I watched that whole live and I would love one of these hats as well. And, yep. uh, you know, you let me know. And then whoever those are after that, you can ask for their address and stuff. So I'm sorry to make you work so hard, Cash. No, it's that. fine. You know, it's fine. <laughs> I appreciate all these people. Hey. So one more question here. Uh, John Hudson Valley asked a really good question. It says, can Wait I up. buy a, can, can I buy a truck? Then go ease. Uh, it was at 431. He asked this. Uh, says, can I, can you buy a truck? Then go to a company like Prime. Yes, you can. Uh, Prime has very strict restrictions on their trucks. So I think they got to be like four or five years or newer. Um, so you can, you can do that. Uh, his comment was probably about, I don't know, 20 back there. Um, oh yeah, I see, oh, it. I see it. Yeah. So my question would be, uh, or my thing would be, I wouldn't want to go to prime because they don't care if they pull good rates, you know, they're making money off selling trucks and they're making money off of, you know, put, putting people through training and school. So, um, you know, that's my whole thing with mega carriers in general is uh, there's your success doesn't determine their success. Um, if you're with a smaller carrier, your success determines their success. But with a big carrier, they'll, you know, they'll put you on a Greyhound back to nowhere and 
they'll hose out that truck and they'll have a new guy in it by tomorrow. So, you know, like I, I would, I would be real weary of, uh, you know, but yes, you can, you know, but you, if you're going to do mega carrier, uh, leasing onto it, you got to call them because a lot of them now, like John Krishner trucking, they won't, you can't bring your own truck. You have to buy one of their trucks. Of course you do. Of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> of course uh, you do, you know. You know. Um, yeah. So overall, I mean, you want to do any more Q&As or what ended at this? It, it's, yeah. I mean, it's either way. Either way, I'm good. I mean, we. I don't want to keep people all day. Um, but, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm always up for questions. I hear that. Yeah, go ahead, uh, uh, Cash. I know, I know you're probably using your phone right now, but if you could put your link and put your email and have them reach out to you. And if they, any mother truckers, if you reach out to cash by email or by a video and you say, Hey, I want one of these mother trucker hats. Cash is going to pick some winners. Okay. So, you know, we got three made here just for uh, all you subscribers here and I'll be giving out more in the future, but there it is. And then put a link to your uh, YouTube channel too, as well. Okay. And uh, another thing a lot of people ask me is where to buy a truck. Like, where would I buy? I'm a big fan. Uh, I know I see a lot of guys on YouTube now going to the auction and buying trucks. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more of a dealership, local dealership. I don't want to buy a truck from 900 miles away. I'd rather buy it at a local dealership. And there's enough dealerships around. I can find it. You know, like this truck I have, I waited, I waited on this truck in a local area this type of truck because you got to, you know, business is about relationships, mm. build those local relationships. Like I know I bought this truck from a dealership. When I go to trade it in, I'm going right back to that dealership. You know what I mean? They know this truck. I bought it from them. You start to build that loyalty over time, uh, especially with certain salespeople, you know, and you can get a little bit better deal. Maybe, maybe not a better price, but they'll throw in a little something extra, you know, Things like that. I'm all about relationships. So um, that that would be because I get that question a lot. I just wanted to throw that out there. No, I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Stay on thank for you. a little bit thank you. because uh, uh, we'll end the live bit. I just want to talk to you just for a little bit. Yeah. But, um, you know, thank you so much, uh, Mother Truckers, you know, because honestly, this is fun for me. Uh, I've never had this many people support us and I'm sure it's a fun experience for you as well. Cash to have, you know, a hundred yeah. people or a couple hundred people that have jumped on this uh, live, you know, what have you. Yeah. And so it's a lot more than I normally pull. So yeah, uh, you better stop, awesome. you know, you know, <laughs> it, we're just so blessed uh, to just have you guys here. So I just want to thank you so much. And I do apologize if we didn't get to some of your questions, we just wanted to stay on tasks a little bit so that when people do watch the replay, they could get the information that they need. And so I do apologize. Uh, if we did not get to some of your questions, uh, I'll go over it after and I'll reply to all of them, uh, that we can. So if you, if we didn't answer your question, please, when it goes on and publishes, uh, definitely make that same question comment again, and then we'll definitely answer those questions uh, for yeah. you. But overall, thank you. I think it was a great show. Uh, we freestyled it. I think we did good, and I think people got some good information. So uh, thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thanks.